This is Mark Weaver, general manager of the worst professional football club in the country. I swore at the start of the season I'd carry on and do it, and, and I've carried on and done it. I'm not, I won't be forced out by people. Just remember what, what Churchill said. Never give up. Never give up. It's April 1998, and the World Cup is still six weeks away. Doncaster Rovers have been glued to the bottom of the Football League for the last nine months. 109 places below Arsenal in the football pecking order, Doncaster are bankrupt. All their contracted professionals make less in a whole season than Dennis Bergkamp earns in a single week. While the stars at Arsenal will be playing in the World Cup, the Rovers team will be watching it at home. If they're not job hunting. This season, the Rovers have scored 33 goals. They've let in 127. We've been saying all season that, um, you know, thing, you know, around about Christmas, that things could get better. We, we, we're hoping for the next match that things are going to get better, or the season goes on, it's going to get better. But it's it just hasn't. Since August, the team has had six managers, six captains, six goalkeepers. Relegation is a certainty, but they have two matches still to play. If they lose either, they'll have the worst record ever in the history of the Football League. Won four, drawn eight, and lost 38. Why don't we have a better look once? Doncaster Rovers nil, Nottingham Forest eight. Peterborough 5, Doncaster Rovers 0. Doncaster Rovers 1, Cardiff 7. Why now? The club have shed all the uh, all the full-time professionals by well one. They've not had the wages kind of thing that they should have had, you know what I mean? Uh, the goalkeeper's playing practically for nothing. To be taken deliberately down like this, that we have been done, under this ownership, is uh, it's just unbelievable. Nobody understands what's going off this club. Don't smell a bit like that! Don't worry! Weaver! Weaver! The fans blame Mark Weaver, but he says he had no choice. At the start of the season, the club went into administration and the wage bill was slashed. Mark Weaver believes that given the financial constraints he's been working under, it's a miracle that the club has managed to field a team at all. I've got a couple of security lads who travel with me now every game, home and away. I had a death threat through the post at the football club and at my home address in Manchester where uh, my head was chopped off, a colour picture taken out of a local newspaper with my head chopped off and blood dripping down and uh, leave or else Donny boot boys. Mark Weaver has taken over the hot seat at Doncaster Rovers, but the man really in charge is Ken Richardson, who bought a substantial share in the club in 1993. He put his daughter and niece on the board and told everyone to call him the benefactor. In 1995, a fire almost destroyed the main stand of the club. Petrol cans were found at the scene. Nine months later, Ken Richardson was arrested and charged with conspiracy to commit arson. He denies all the charges and the case will be heard next January. For players like Mike Smith, Ken Richardson is an enigmatic figure. He hasn't been to a game for nine months, but in spite of that, he's maintained a very hands-on approach to running the team. We'll be in a dressing room, say, an hour before the game, and uh, he'll probably phone up with the team to tell Mark what the team's going to be, if he does not, if he or as he hasn't done it. So then we're all sitting there, and we'll be getting changed, then he'll be on the mobile, and then Mark will come round and say, such and such, you know, he wants you. So you'll, you know, you'll pick up the phone, it'll be me, for example, and he'll, and then he'll start rabbit, no, 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 how, how he wants you to play, and he wants you to do this, and 
Never mind the fact that he's not even at the game, he's probably sitting with his feet up at home, but he's telling you what he wants you to do. <laughs> I, just find, I just find it absolutely amazing that things like that go on. Ooh, can it, can it, can it, can it? The man officially in charge of football at the club is former Uruguayan youth international Danny Bergara. I believe, and I honestly believe that, that I am um, one of the best coaches in this country. I'm, I'm part of the world anyway. I've been around the world. I've got more experience than anybody else. Danny was the top striker in the Spanish league for two years running in the late 60s. He came to England 25 years ago. Doncaster Rovers is his 13th club. In July 88, I became uh, the first foreign manager in the history of English football. This is by far the worst job that I've ever had to, to face. I have learned in, in, in the six months I've been in this club things that I never, never, never would have never believed existed. Listen, lad, I explained it to you yesterday. I have been explaining it to you for the past three months. And it's, it's, it's funny, it's one, one person here that I never had tell him nothing and he's doing exactly what I, I asking you for three months. Danny you. resigned three weeks after he took the job because of abuse from the fans. But now he's back and determined to see the season out. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm not having a rocket at you. I'm just bloody making sure that you get into your mind that you've got the ability. But that one is not chilling a fool. And neither is at the front. It wasn't always this way at Doncaster. There are still a few people at the club who can remember the glory days. This is in the old players' lounge, this. And these are some of the past teams, some of the past players what uh, played for the Rovers. Some of them, a lot of them are dead, but uh, quite a few of them are still living. And this is a gl glaring one. This is Peter Doherty, who, who came and took him up into the second division. This is the great Charlie Williams, who was down the other day. He, he went on to become a famous star and comedian. On TV, he was in Golden Shot, in the Golden Shot. And what was what was the biggest crowd you were ever here for? Thirty-six thousand, all city game. And uh, what was it like? What was the atmosphere like? Oh, it was <laughs> it was tremendous. You could not hear yourself as as I say. I'd be around about that'd be about nine or ten, and it was fantastic. We thought it was out of this world. Couldn't believe it. Football stopped becoming a sport many years ago now. We've got gates of 700, 500, 900, 1200 here regularly this season. And gate receipts of that means you can't survive in a football league. It's all in the Premier League, all the Premier and Premier. They've got all the money and all these little clubs, we haven't got nothing. And yet they've got to get the talent from these. As soon as we get a youth or somebody looking good, they come and snap him up by it with no chance and that's it. It's not, it's not sport anymore, it's just money. Teams like Doncaster have always survived by nurturing young talent and selling it on. Offside! Famous for rejecting the services of a young Kevin Keegan, now the youth team of the lifeblood of Doncaster Rovers. We're good. We are good. The best? Yeah, probably. Many people have said that. Many people have said we're the best team. We've beat, we've beat the big teams. Yeah. But most of them now play for the first team because all the professionals have been sold. Danny's reluctant to play them in the youth team any longer. The thing is that if, if we play them and they get injured, then we've got a problem with the first team. Danny needs 13 fit players for the Rovers' final away game against Swansea in two days' time. Good afternoon and welcome to the last bingo away match of the season. Right, we've got playing for big prizes today. We're playing for £2.80 for your line and £5 for your full house. Yes! Right, eyes down for your line. Here we go. It is a family club, Doncaster Rovers. All the supporters get on with each other. And in the past, we've always had a good relationship with the management. I think Mark Weaver is nothing much more than a puppet for Mr Richardson. 
basically. Mr. Richardson says something, Mark Weaver does it. Mark Weaver does it to a good standard, he does whatever Mr. Richardson wants. We are very bitter towards both Richardson and Weaver to think that these two men can do this to a club. Personally, I think uh, the only thing that would help the club would be to bring in, uh, if bring in new owners uh, with a new manager, an experienced manager, who could bring in players who could get us out of the situation we're in. That's where we statue. Shows how much I love the club. I had it about six weeks ago, so I knew we were going to go down anyway, but I still had done now. Uh, well, I wouldn't done the same as him, but he had to have his coloured in, just to be better than that. <laughs> On the team coach, Danny waxes philosophical in the face of disaster. Well, two very important things at stake, and that is your pride and your own careers. Uh, not just the ones of the players, but uh, uh, myself. And uh, I can't say stuff because I don't go any, <laughs> I'm afraid. And um, when you compare top of the Premier with a team going down to the conference, two things are in common in any game you played. And uh, your pride and your career is always at stake. As Danny said, you know, we're not dead. You know, we're still alive. But in football terms, you know, um, we are dead, really. Danny's desperate for a win today, and he's got a cunning trick up his sleeve to surprise the Swansea defence. What number do you play at? Four. Always? All through the yeah, season? well, most of the season. Until they mess about with the numbers and try and confuse other people. What? what? I... Try and confuse the opposition by putting people in different, different numbers so, so they're playing different positions, they think. Oh. Stupid. <laughs> We've got Craig Davidson goal, we've got Prince Moncrief number two, we've got Morris Hill... In the press box, bingo caller and lifelong fan Paul Mayfield commentates on the match for Viking Local Radio. Harvey Cunningham seven, Mark Donnelly eight. We've got 16-year-old Robert Betts in for Matthew Russell who's gone back to Scarborough. And this lad has had to get permission of his headmaster to play. Uh, we've got Aidy Mike at number ten, we've got Paddy Fresh from his uh, jail stint at number eleven. Yeah, good. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Cunny, mate. That's what I'm saying. And just as we were walking in, when we got, uh, came through the press stores, we got Yuri Geller in there. So I got his autograph and he's bent me pen. Yeah, so Yuri Geller was coming in. I think he's come to bend the three kicks for Doncaster today. Do you have a bunch of keys? No, no, no. I know we go to the room, but I can't get my home. Okay, now, good luck to you, huh? Bye bye. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! Listen, lads, it's a, it's a long way to go, to, to come, and then get crucified. And you'll only get crucified if you don't put 100% effort and concentration. As simple as that. Flying high up in the sky, we'll keep the red flag flying high. When the Rovers win the league, we'll keep the red flag flying high. We are playing for pride, we are playing for our own careers, we are playing for our families here. Now, you show me how much you want your careers, how much you, you want your families, and how much you want to keep in this game and in your bloody wages. Okay? So, come up, go fast. It's the football club's last ever football league away game. You can take it the two ways. You can go out and toss it off and we get dumped and that's it. Or we can go out there with a bit of pride and win the game. The other thing is we've got that unenviable record of being, if we lose today, the worst ever team in the league. It's the biggest ever amount of defeats, and we don't want to be able with that, because you don't deserve that. We will! 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 Well done, Danny. Danny, that's the right place to put it. Hilton will be at the back. All right, you get the ball. Me, you got the ball. Don't shake your head. Yes! That is a great ball. Unfortunately, Danny's plan to switch the numbers has backfired. The only person it's confused is Danny himself. Well, he should be Hilton on this post and... and uh, um, Betsy. So he should be Betsy on the other one. Yeah, but you've done it on the numbers and the numbers have changed. That's what happens when you change the numbers. Haven't you? You've done it on the numbers. I told him. No, I told him. Ah, oh, yeah, just give them! 
He's dead right, he's dead! Hey, he's out! He's bloody out, guys, man! He has a good struggle. Time! I knew that was going to come with that. Half time, no score. We're actually drawing nil nil. So that's a minor miracle for Doncaster, though, isn't it, really? <laughs> it probably is, yes. Uh, I mean, Doncaster have been really sort of backs to the wall in this first half, but uh, some resolute defending by the, the youngsters. I mean, every shot that was going in, they were there jumping in, blocking the shot. Um, I mean, the amount of saves that uh, Craig Davis has had to make has been quite a few, although not really troubled. Um, we've held out really well. We can win this game. Matt, you want to No, you don't. Listen, you, you at least don't lose it. At least. Come on, we're Johnny Rovers, we are supreme. We'll never be mastered by you, by you weaver bastards. We'll keep the red flag flying high, flying high up in the sky. They never let me down, you know. They never ever let me down. They follow me home sometimes. They're busting out! Rovers! Rovers! Oh, Betsy, shoot! No! Go, buddy! Go, buddy! That's it! That's it, Danny! Yes! We've had the most of the possession, but we've had the best chances, and we've come here nil-nil with a bunch of kids, and it all holds good for next year if we can keep the club going. Next week, when they realise that's the last game, I think that's when it'll hit them the hardest. I think that's when people will be hit the hardest, which is one of the reasons why I'm not going. Last ever game in the Football League, we've got to win that game. We've got to go out with a win. After all the disappointment of this season, if we can win that game, that means so much to go out with a win. For the fans, winning the last game in the Football League would be amazing. But what they really want is to replace Ken Richardson with a more sympathetic owner before the new season. If we could get taken over, I think the businessmen of Doncaster, the supporters of Doncaster, will come back so that we could be like a phoenix from the ashes. We could rise from them and get back up the, into the Football League. But it is a case of getting the present regime out. Could the Rovers' white knight be Anton Johnson, Essex nightclub supremo, self-confessed football addict and would-be owner of the Rovers. In the last 15 years, Doncaster has lost its mines and its power stations. Now it's in danger of losing the football club too. Literally built by the supporters just after the First World War, the club is now up for sale. Welcome to Bellevue. <laughs> I mean, no disrespect to Greyhound stadiums, but it looks similar to one of them from 15 years ago, doesn't it, rather than a football ground. We actually had somebody the other week came to buy some tiles. They thought it was an actual tile depot. <laughs> the stadium may be falling apart, but the club sits on the most expensive site in the Football League outside London, with a redevelopment value of £18 million. Next door is a thriving retail park. Developers have long wanted to expand. But the only thing standing in the way is the football club, which has a 75-year lease on the ground. This is one of the few decent things we've got left. So we managed to keep that. And look at the state of what we've got. Oh, doors. And then people will say, you know, what was the point in spending money? This is the home team dressing room. The man who holds the purse strings is Ken Richardson. Hailed as a saviour when he took over, he initially spent heavily on new players. Now the fans feel their benefactor has lost interest in the club. But as he no longer talks to them or the press, they can't be sure. I can stand up for him because I know what he did for the football club, I know how much time he put in, I know how much it meant to him, I know how much money he's put in, I know what he's been through to try and get the results. Maybe when he came in you could say there was some good done, we've got a lot of new players, some good, some bad. 
he's now withdrawn his financial support. Uh, most of those players have gone. Uh, there are no assets to fall back on, nothing. Financial or footballing assets. He's got no connections through the town of Doncaster. I think he's trying to, one of these businessmen trying to jump in the bandwagon and oh, we'll make a couple of million pounds out of football. But it's, it's all about a property development of land here. It's not about a football club anymore. Like many small clubs, Doncaster Rovers is virtually worthless as a going concern. Its Premier League price tag reflects the value of its lease, not its football. And it's the pitch, not the team, which attracts the takeover bids. A lot of people have tried to buy the club, but no deal has yet been completed. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Save the Rovers group. And thank you all very, very much for coming. Um, we're here tonight to find out what the future holds for Doncaster Rovers. Anton Johnson has been trying to buy the club for 18 months, and he's still the people's choice. Mark Weaver has turned up to represent the absent Ken Richardson. But obviously, there's no question we're all football mates. I mean, I, I think uh, I saw two under-18 games this week, I've seen two amateur games, I've seen one professional game, and we feel that we can turn this thing round. And the only way we're going to do that is spending money. Thank you very much. I want to ask you, please, to give Mark Weaver a fair hearing and none of this ridiculous personal abuse. Listen to what he's got to say, and if you've got any questions, please ask, please ask them in a courteous way. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to answer some of them questions. I think what you want to know is, is he going to go there tomorrow and buy your football club? and not anything else. What I want to know is, does Mr Johnson value, I'll delete this, does Mr Johnson value Doncaster Rovers at the asking price that Dean Trading and the Richardson Trust put on it? And that is 3.85 million. Oh, if he, no, hey, hold on, be fair. He said it won't that be is three. what, I am asking, I, that is not my value of it, that is his value of it. You need to know, is he going to go there tomorrow and offer him 3.85, because if he is, he can offer it now me in writing, and I'll guarantee this room here that Richardson will sell it for that amount of money. Is that your call? No, that's nothing to do with me. No, I'm being fair and telling you the price. Yeah, I don't want to get in an argument with him because I want him to buy the club. I sincerely do. I sincerely do. And ask him that. You're asking How will you say it? Yeah. Right. We did offer 3.75. It's still on the table. But at this point in time, I'm afraid I'm going to have to let Eric Hampton explain how Mr. Richardson wanted the money paid. I believe he's buying it for the right price, but I'm not the seller. What you all seem to forget is I'm not selling it. That's what and I, I would ring him now and tell him to sell it for 50p, yeah. because I want out. I can't sell it for him. I can't sell it for him. Ladies and please, please, please. For Johnson, buying the Rovers will not be straightforward. The elusive Ken Richardson may own the club, but he leases the ground from Doncaster Council, who were very upset when he advertised it for sale shortly after he bought it in 1993. We don't uh, view with any enthusiasm people advertising on land which, um, which is owned by the council. So that all came to naught. And I suppose that uh, had a bad effect on the relationship between the council and uh, Mr Richardson. The current council situation is that we're, we do not, uh, we're not interested in, in having a, uh, direct negotiations with Mr Richardson. We're leaving that to uh, third parties who we can then uh, begin to, to develop uh, some more confidence in. What we really were concerned about our size, whether we're going to be... Uh, plenty of leg room in them, is there? Well, and, uh, not There's yet, deadlock in Doncaster, but today Anton Johnson's 150 miles away in Essex, and his mind's on another purchase. This is, this is the sort I like, In the 80s, Anton Johnson was known as the king of clubs, the Mr. Fixit of football. He knew how to bring in the stars. He brought Emlyn Hughes to Rotherham, Bobby Moore to Southend, and George Best to Bournemouth. But in 1984, the Football League decided he had broken their rules, by having dual control of South End and Rotherham. They've pledged to take a close look at any club he tries to buy in the future. Back in Doncaster, 
everything's going wrong. Ken's got problems with the mower. As I say, it's, it's getting on a bit now, this machine, whether we can or not, I don't know. Well, it's one of the, uh, it's one of the, look, the uh, supporters club bought us about two, set down to about two or three years ago. It's an Allet mowing machine, front, with a Robin Reliant engine. The lock has broken on the player's entrance, and half the youth team are locked inside. <laughs> Nicky wants a screwdriver. Is the groundsman in there? Yeah. <laughs> and all of Danny's remaining staff have left or resigned. I've got to do the training um, for the first team. The training for the reserves, which is similar to the same as first team. The kids, the youth, the under 18s. Uh, I do the School of Excellence every Thursday night. I have to drive the kids when I'm available. Take them to, you know, whatever whatever venue, Leeds, Scarborough. I drive the coach myself. Um, this is, is another great experience. The youth team have to train by themselves in the stands to save wear and tear on the pitch. While the first team train with Danny in the local park without lines or goalposts. Danny wants to work on pattern, but he doesn't have a full squad. Since the club stopped paying expenses, training is voluntary, and there aren't many volunteers today. Uh, you got back to the ground, and uh, you can do your weight a couple of seconds, or leave it alone. Simple as that. Though the Rovers are dying, football in Doncaster is as popular as ever. More children play organised soccer here than anywhere else in the country. But their heroes are not from Bellevue. It's Man United, Newcastle, Liverpool who are the big teams now in South Yorkshire. For these children, football means the Premier League and satellite television, not a rainy afternoon at Bellevue. A whole generation of fans have been lost to Doncaster Rovers. The youth team are playing their final home fixture at the club. By half time, they're one nil down, and Danny is trying to inspire them with a beautiful game. You probably saw Arsenal the other day, and within 13 minutes, you would be already pulled one eye, Blackburn. By moving the ball quickly to the front, got into the opponent's half, and he blew in round the ring down there. They were crosses in, they were dribbling in, they were blooming strikes at goal. Fantastic. If you don't want to play for Arsenal, what the hell are you doing here then? If we can just repair that, the simple things, where do you do them? Get the ball at the back, hit the front. I don't mean move, I don't mean walk, I mean hit the front. Chest control! It's gold for me. The youth team finished their season on a defeat. They'll soon find out that all their remaining fixtures are cancelled due to lack of funds. And there will be no youth programme next season. With days to go to the end of the season, the club's in desperate straits. Only a large gate at the last game will save them. For the few remaining players, the future is very uncertain. I don't know what's going to happen now. Um, I spoke to Mark Weaver and he, he sort of said that, you know, there's still interesting people that are looking to buy the club, but as far as it goes, you know, the, the present regime, they're, they're still in charge and until anything happens, I can't really say anything. Sadly for Doncaster, nothing does look like happening. And would-be saviour Anton Johnson has been shopping in Scotland for other football clubs. Obviously our priority was Doncaster, but we've certainly got our... Uh, I, we actually put the offer into Falkirk, which initially uh, was the one and only and felt it was going to be accepted. It's still in abeyance at the moment. Uh, again, we're in, interested in uh, Partick Thistle. We did contact Motherwell. We found, felt that they were up for grabs and missed it by a week. I spoke to the chairman and Mr Chapman. Um, 
And so, uh, but at the end of the day, if we had the opportunity, it would be Doncaster. Back in Yorkshire, with hours to go before the last game in the Football League, Save the Rovers are planning their final stand. It's opened up to everybody now. What do we do? Some people have told me in advance that they don't want to do anything. They just want to turn up at the game, sit, stand, and then shed the tears at the end of the game, go onto the pitch and do their own thing in driver. Others have said we've got to disrupt it. There's got to be no game. If the game's cancelled, then we can say that Rovers were never kicked out of the league because the last game was never played. If we can do any good by dying ourselves to, on Saturday, the good we're going to do is by warning other clubs. Well, we're dead, aren't we? So we've got to go out in such a way that we bring it home to everybody in the football league what can happen yeah. with bad ownership. And it's our only, it's our last chance. Nobody's going to take any notice of when we're in the conference. Why is the Sun interested in covering us when we've got two tits in charge? <laughs> There's a lot riding on the last game. Every league club gets a share of TV and pools revenue, but the Football League have withheld the Rovers' money and will only pay the £200,000 owed if they complete their fixtures. If Doncaster Rovers don't fulfil their fixtures, Doncaster Rovers will cease to exist. And the only people who can stop that now are pitch invasions, not money. I can make sure we fulfil the fixtures, that's not a problem. I'm not saying we disrupt the game or stop the game, but we want, in my opinion, we want to have as many banners and notices as we possibly can get down there. Because for once, Weaver won't be there, hopefully. I think if you're going to do anything, you've got to do something very big and very spectacular, or you've got to do nothing at all. It's all down to the last game. If Rovers lose it, they'll have the worst ever record in the Football League. If they don't complete the fixture, the club might die anyway. Mark Weaver has said he'll stay away. The fans know it's their last chance to draw the attention of the football world to their plight. It's the morning of Doncaster's last match in the Football League and the South Yorkshire police are preparing for trouble. They're expecting a record gate. Nearly 5,000 tickets have been sold. I have that pinned on, on my front. I've had them all over me all season, various ones on the front, on the back, various posters, but the, la the last few months it's, we've been aiming at Weaver because Weaver's been the one there, but on Wednesday night we decided it's got to be back to Richardson again. My father, I mean, he was the one who took me to Bellevue first. And uh, when we had a minute's silence after the uh, Hillsborough tragedy, I mean, it, it, it was my father that was in my mind. He's there with me when I'm at Bellevue. Um, and he'll be there today. And I'm sure there'll be hundreds of people there today who will be thinking about former players, but they'll be thinking about the friends that they knew there and the relatives and their early memories. And it's part of our lives. And it's not fair that that has been taken away from us. Well, I mean, just where, not where we're laying the reeves is, is where I first stood and Tony first stood and we first took our children because it was the family stand, it was an old wooden stand but that's where the children went and that's your, that's your early memories of Rovers you know, sitting there and then later on standing there sad look for luck, we might even win today <laughs> there's no chance yeah. reset! reset! The Colchester team have everything to play for today. They could be promoted to the second division while the Rovers bow out of the league. Before they get you. Yeah. <laughs> that might be my last ever signature. <laughs> Despite saying he'd stay away, Mark Weaver has turned up with a larger group of minders than ever. As usual, Ken Richardson will not be there, but he's faxed the boys his game plan from his home in the Isle of Man. Mark, wind the lads up, keep them mean, no quarter to be given. Winners are the people who want to win the most. Show the bastards today and finish the season with a victory. I think that the, you'll find that the fans will be, be upset by the fact that I'm here. I think, I think that, will, that will certainly be. Um, it's been a hard decision whether I came or I didn't come. We've out! We've out! We've out! 
obviously some aspects, some safety is always at risk when people are so upset at one person and, and there's so many of them. I accept I run that risk this afternoon of that. We vote! We vote! We vote! Do you think you'll still be here next year? No. Will you still be in football? I don't know. <laughs> there won't be many offers, will there? It's quarter to three and the terraces at Bellevue are almost full for the first time this season. Back in the dressing room, the club's top scorer, Prince Moncrief, is feeling optimistic. You fancy a win today, yeah? One nil. One nil, you reckon? Yeah. Who's going to score? Aidy Mike. Aidy. If not Aidy, Paddy. Do you want? If not Paddy, me. Cool. All right? Okay. After the game, you come straight off the pitch. You don't go to the fans, you don't do anything. The police have told you, you must come straight off the pitch, down the tunnel. You come in here, if the police think it's safe for you to go back out, and there'll be no problems, they'll take you out. Don't stay out there, right? Don't give your shirts away or anything at the end. Wait until the police have come back in, OK? The management have agreed that if, and only if, there is no pitch excursion before the full time, the players have agreed to come back onto the pitch at the end of the match and mix with supporters. They've just said that um, some wreaths will be um, yeah, yeah. Uh, play the last post on the pitch at quarter to three um, and deliver some wreaths to the town end stand. Um, if the police are happy with that and it stops any problems, then I'm happy for them to do as, as they wish. Uh, that we have to work. You, you have done your best, sometimes not good enough, other times very good, but all round what you want for today is to round the whole thing up and, uh, and finish the season and go down with some kind of pride. It's not really Doncaster Rollers. It's uh, at this moment of time. It's, uh, it's nothing else. It's not Mark Weaver. It's not Danny Pagara. It's your own career, lads. Someone will pick most of you up, or some people will come and pick you up, like they have done with Sad quite a number of the youngsters. If you go out there and, and show the desire, the will, the will to win, there will always be somebody that will give you another chance. I don't need to say anything else except that it's fancy coming from a bloody foreign Uruguayan to tell you what one of the greatest leaders that this country has ever produced, Winston Churchill. Never give up. Off you go. Good luck. Come on, boys. <laughs> And it's a pity the police aren't telling him to get out the ground. Come with me! Come with me! Yeah. Come on! Hey! Yeah, come hey! On. I, I have to walk by your hands every night! I used to go up in the box, but to stand down there. It's good. good as that is. Oh, not at the moment, no. <laughs> you come to watch a football match, not to somebody shouting and bowling to a certain person. I mean, it's not, not my cup to you. I mean, I come here to watch football.
again was incited by the appearance of, uh, of Mr. Weaver because he's continually stated in the press these last two weeks that he would not attend the match. I'm just going to tell the John Gasser players what's going on. Hey, come on, lads. Don't do that to me again, Mr. Don't do that to me again. Every match from the beginning of the season, we've had this. Every match from the beginning of the season, We've had this. We've been having pitch invasions in the middle of the match, pitch invasions before and after the match. Right, we'll see them over there. Should be a no. I won't protesting, I was doing my own little piece. I weren't causing any trouble and I got a policeman sticking his fingers straight behind my ears. And what can you do but stand up when somebody's forcing the fingers into the back of your ears? So, oh it hurt, but at the end of the day, it's part, it's part of ritual at club, you know. Everybody's hurting today. Time it's nil nil. Hey, listen. Forty five minutes, come on. Let's keep fighting. Come on, boys. 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 Come on, into the second half, the police advise Mark Weaver to leave the ground for his own safety. I'd like to see him go out with a win if they could. Five minutes before the end, Doncaster's gallant defence is finally breached. The Rovers have broken the only record they didn't want to break, and 75 years of Football League history is about to come to an end. A fresh start for Colchester, but it's all over for the Rovers. Okay, well done. All the battle. Lads, lads, your decision. I'm going to ask you to be out there. That's up to you. I'm going to say, who they're from. Do you want to spend five minutes with them? Yeah, yeah. Danny, is that all right? Is that for them? I ah, know. My <laughs> What do you think, the boys? Tell me, no, no. I could watch, I could watch Premiership football every week, but my heart's in Doncaster, so. I'm still here and I'll be still here next season. Of course I'm hopeful, but I don't know. Well hopefully we shall fingers crossed. Hopefully we shall be here next next year. Next season if we see their team. Try and support them on the way up as we've supported them on the way down. I hope clubs don't go like it, but the Premier League are getting just too much money and they're just too greedy. Now the first division clubs are getting too greedy. And clubs like this over the heart of a community, they're just going to die.
we're just the first in a long, long row of deaths, I can assure you. We're just the first, we're just the start of the snowball. Somebody, had, it had to start somewhere, and similar to yourselves, every TV station, every radio station, there's one who hear about this one. In two years' time, you'll have a pick of 20 clubs to go and stop beat to, to, to find out what went wrong, and you'll say, it's funny that, because Mark told us all about that two years ago, because that's what's going to happen.